Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to go into why GIMP is going to remain my choice for free image editor, even in the year 2017. So, when you boot up GIMP for the first time, you're probably going to notice, or if you've ever used Photoshop, you would notice anyway, that it's got a very similar interface. I think that's a very good thing, because Photoshop's got it right. Um, having things like the layer window over here, uh, a very nice toolbar that's button heavy, and having your content in the center of the screen that you can zoom in and out of, you have guides, all those kinds of things. But the difference, of course, is that GIMP is a free software while Photoshop is paid. But beyond just mentioning that Photoshop is awesome, which it is pretty dang good, but it is also very expensive, especially if you're not a professional. Um, let's get into some of the reasons why GIMP stands out in and of itself. So, many other image editors, the free ones, don't actually have that many insane features. If you look at something like Paint.net or uh, even the classic Windows Paint, they're pretty straightforward and don't necessarily have um, all of the extra features that you would see in GIMP. One thing I think GIMP does do very well is to have a, a solid layer management over here. So, it's never going to become confusing while you're working within GIMP that you have different pieces of your content on different layers and as long as you're on top of creating new layers by the way this layer dialog is open by default and you can always go back over to recently closed dialogs to reopen it up but as long as you're on top of your layer management here it's really easy to make sure that you don't accidentally overwrite some of the content on one layer by playing around with another layer so if I go say um, draw with the black marker or black brush over here on this layer one it's not going to screw with the other layers even if i put it above it's still separated and that's really good i think that's a basic for any viable um layer manipulation or image manipulation program just something you have to have so speaking of these dialogue windows i would say that after you get used to gimp a little bit they're pretty intuitive um having your tools over here on the left and layers over here on the right once again, that is pretty similar to the Photoshop layout. The difference is that all of these different segments are separated from each other by default, which you may like, you may not like. You can drag them around the screen, and because it's not a full screen app uh, by default, you can actually see what's going on behind. Although, if you do want to just do a full screen thing, you can maximize that window right there. But if you do want to ever take everything and make it one window, you can just go to Windows and hit Single Windowed Mode, which will give you an interface that's much more like what you would expect in a image manipulation program. So for some people, this might be preferable for you if you want to work kind of in that classic style. But if you ever want to add in more dialogues, you have a lot of options here. I would say that 90 or 95 percent of the work you do in GIMP is going to be in the layers and the toolbox over here, at least for the simpler stuff. But if you ever need more for something like pulling up the color map, you can do that. It'll add as a tab over here and you can add in more tabs in pretty much the same way. So navigation, for instance, and you don't have to keep them in the default location. You can drag them over here. You can have them be a separate window, which is a little bit of a change from having the single windowed mode. And you can close them out when you're done with them. Now you'll notice in the middle, I do have a guide set up. I think that guides are very, very important uh, when you are trying to design anything from a thumbnail to a website. Um, anything that you want to be per, uh, pixel perfect is going to be highly benefited by having these guides. And you can go up to the image menu to, in order to create them. Horizontal guides as well. If you want them in the center, that's fine. And these are very useful because you can actually snap to the guides. Uh, basically in view, snap to guides. And then drag your layers where you want them. And that little anchor point you see in the middle, the plus, once that gets close to the guide, it's going to snap there. And you have it pixel perfectly centered. Likewise, you can do the same thing with the horizontal guides to make them positioned vertically where you want them as well. Here's one of the things I don't think any other free app really does nearly as well as GIMP. If you go to the filters menu, you have a lot of options here. I always like to see a lot of options in my audio, video, and uh, image programs. But a lot of these are pretty useful, like for instance, Drop Shadow, we can go add Drop Shadow to a text very easily. Decor, adding a border to your image, so it will add like 30 pixels 
on the top, the bottom, or whichever sides you want of a certain color. And actually, it won't just be a color, it'll... Uh, well, let me just show you, actually. I'm going to decor, border... Let's just stand with the standard blue border color there. So if we look at the corners, you'll notice that there's a little bit of a... I believe it's called like an outset effect, where although we selected a blue initially, at the corners it changes, almost like uh, if you have a wooden frame, it would change a little bit. There'd be that line uh, where the two pieces of wood divide. So it looks a little bit better, a little bit more realistic when you use the border effect inside of GIMP, and I do like to use it quite often. Another feature I think is pretty solid, layer scaling. So if we go up to layer and scale layer with a layer selected in the layers dialog, we can basically manipulate one piece of our image or one layer without messing with the other pieces. So let's scale this down a bit. And you can see we took that image, resized it, and everything else is left perfectly alone. That's pretty important and uh, it's something I would often use if I'm making YouTube video thumbnails, for instance. So here, obviously, I went out and grabbed a photo that has a lot of acne on it. Acne would be one of the standard things you'd be trying to remove in an image manipulation program like uh, Photoshop if you wanted to make it a very photogenic image. So. We have tools in Photoshop, like the healing tools, clone tools, um, blur and sharpen, and also the smudge tool, which are really good for working with things like this. So I'll use the healing tool here right now, and we'll just do a little bit. So selecting a target part of the uh, image or the layer, and we'll try to draw with that over some of the areas that have a lot of acne. And uh, obviously I'm not perfect at this, but you can see how using these kind of tools Although you probably wouldn't use it for this image because it's not subtle at all. But um, you can use tools like this in order to help shape up an image and make it look nicer than it originally was. That's the kind of thing that people use Photoshop a lot for, but the fact that it's provided for you for free in GIMP is really awesome. One more tool I'd like to show off for this video is the Perspective tool. There's also the Shear tool. And what you can do is you can take a flat image like this um, let's mess with the layers a bit to get that showing above it and you can actually manipulate its perspective Basically making it look like it belongs on another image So if I use the perspective tool here and I drag the corners to the corners of this laptop screen You'll see how it almost looks like this image belongs as the desktop for um, that laptop image in the background it may not be perfect, but it's a heck of a lot better than just like dragging it straight over it with the square image. It actually looks like it's part of the screen in the background. So by using that 10 second effect, this image now looks like it's the desktop of that laptop in the background. Now, obviously I didn't get it pixel perfect. If you were really going to do this for um, serious work or school or something, you'd probably want to put a little bit more time into that. But just for demonstration purposes, I think that's pretty good right there. So that's just some of the tools that GIMP has to offer. It's a really solid program. It does have a bit of a learning curve. Uh, initially, for me, it wasn't the most intuitive thing, but I really do think it's the best one out there. And going forward with GIMP 2.9.4, which I believe is still in more of a development version, um, it's about to release with, basically, color schemes for GIMP. Now, it was possible to theme GIMP's colors uh, before using third-party themes, but now uh, these different shades of black and white are going to be core to GIMP, which is really cool because when I use apps, I actually like to use the dark theme. Um, so that's coming out really, really soon with a Windows installer as well. All in all, uh, GIMP just seems to be really solid once again going forward from 2016 into 2017. So if you're looking for a free image manipulation program, I think GIMP is going to be where it's at. So I've been Chris. Thanks for watching my video on why GIMP is going to be my free image software of choice going into the next year. Hope you found this useful and I'll see you in my future videos.